Yeah, it's good to have you. Uh, happy New Month to everybody. And uh, for those of us in Nigeria, uh, happy Independence Day. Well, today is Nigeria's Independence Day. Uh, if you don't know, possibly you are watching from Cameroon, Zimbabwe or somewhere else. Uh, Nigeria is celebrating its 58 years of independence today. Uh, we just here to just share some of the thoughts around about Nigeria and the hopes that are thereafter. Uh, I have with me uh, in the studio uh, as my co-presenter, my name is Kuridi Akitunde and I also have uh, 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 to, my, to my right side, Charles. You welcome sir. happy independence and, uh, same, and, and happy I, independence to nigerians all right and i have uh uh sir, sir, smart yeah. yeah yeah thank you happy independence day to you too all right thank you very much uh we wish everyone uh happy independence uh i, 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 I is the mood uh, today I, I i don't know uh, mm. let me see what uh I think uh, coming on the way, I just noticed that there are a lot of uh, preparations at the Eagle Square. And, um, well, I wouldn't know if that is the mode of every Nigerian. <laughs> 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 so. uh, yeah. It can be rest assured there are agitations, there are reactions everywhere mm -hmm. from across Nigeria, from the happenings all, uh, all around. But it's independent. And, um, uh, well, uh, let me let me say that uh, I think the weekend was uh, a bit occupied for me too. Um, I was uh, at a wedding on Saturday. Mm. Uh, of one <laughs> of, uh, uh, the daughters of one of our boss here. Yeah. And, uh, I think it was good. I, I, I saw you, sir. Yeah, I, I was <laughs> there too. Uh, basically talking about the independence, mm. uh, one question has been in my mind. Yeah. If indeed we have any reason to, to celebrate <laughs> it. And uh, the whole thing is uh, yes and no. Um, yes, okay. because we are alive. Mm. And despite all the struggle and all that has happened, Nigeria is still one. Still still United, United. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But then at the same time, there may not be reason to celebrate because uh, <laughs> are we celebrating poverty? <laughs> well. I'm talking about the weekend, sir. It uh, was yeah. a little bit busy for me, mm. but something happened very, very good. Mm. Uh, Friday night around 10 o'clock, a member called me that the mm. wife is in labor. Wow. So I rushed there, pray for, for, for them. Mm. On reaching the cathedral for the, oh, for the power night, he called me that she had delivered. Wow. So wow. It's, okay. it's, been, it's been awesome. <laughs> wow. And after that, that was when we moved to the wedding the following day. Wow. Came back for confirmation class, class. And, and all that and mm. prepared for service. So it, it was full, so but I, wonderful. How was the service yesterday? Yeah. In fact, celebrating Nigeria. Yes, it was a cultural harvest, oh, and then yeah. various tribes came together to perform, oh, okay. uh, wearing their own costumes and mm. all that. So oh. it was colorful wow. and, and, and wonderful. Yeah. That so great. that was like marking uh, Independence mm. Day for us oh, in, in okay. the church. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, I think. Um, yeah, we've had, we've all had. Uh, Charles, how was your weekend? Uh, well, uh, my weekend Saturday pretty much occupied, and um, I think we had we had lots of activities coupled with the wedding you talked about. Okay, yeah, yes, so I was there, there. Yeah. Yeah. Right. and then yesterday or two. But we thank God we're here today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's independence. Yeah. Yes, it's independence, uh, and. Uh, uh, just now, we let's we'll look at the newspapers and um, from there we'll continue from there. So um, l let me just go and take a cup of tea <laughs> while uh, I allow you to continue okay. uh, with this newspaper review. Okay. Uh, well, stay tuned because I know you will enjoy this program. It's Nigeria at 58, and we're going to be assessing all areas. So, get uh, a glass of cup or well, let me say a cup of water <laughs> and uh, get your family seated today so will be loaded on this CNN so I, I want you to trust that with us here and so stay tuned we'll be right back
Thank you for staying tuned and happy independence one more time. Now I want to look at the at what the papers have to say today, the first day of October, Independence Day in Nigeria. So um can I smart sir? Yes sir. Um let's let's take a look at Nigerian Tribune first, yeah. then we we'll go to others. Yes sir. So okay, quickly um um, on Nigerian Tribune front page, we have um, minimum wage. I think yeah. it's been it's been uh, it took talk of the uh, will I say town now country of for, for, for for some of days course. now. Okay, so he said labor calls of warning strike to resume meeting with the FG on fourth of uh, fourth of October. Yeah, I think it is important that the federal government should look at that seriously. Exactly. Because if the constitution said it should be reviewed after five years, mm. it's very, very important that they should Certainly. look at it. Although, talking about the 18,000 now, people are not even, the governors are not even able to pay. Yes. So, but then, if there is, where there is will, there will be a way. So they should look at it and take it seriously. Yes. You know, I've been thinking, why, why, why has it been hard for the federal government to do something on this minimum wage. I think the, the, the call for a change yeah, has been on. There has been a misplace of priority. The cost of governance mm. is so high. Uh, the other day I was driving at the airport road and one of the big men passed. Guess how many cars were in that convoy? <laughs> Almost 20 for one person. I can imagine. And all those cars, once they get to filling station, they must be filled. And, and all that. So um, it, it, it's unfortunate. So the high cost of governance is not, is, is, is not mm. necessary. Why can't a governor use just three? One at the bank, one in the front, and he's exactly. in the middle. And exactly. then make things easy. Exactly. So until wow. we look at those areas to cut costs, mm. it, it will be somehow difficult. Wow. OK, um, let's go on. Um, Lagos APC. Ambode, Tinubu, Songwolu, Inferi, Exchanges. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's uh, take a look at the details. So, Olu not fit for Lagos. He was arrested in US for spending fake dollars. dollars. <laughs> <laughs> he was rehabilitated in Bagada General Hospital. Uh, governor alleges. That's yeah, somebody speaking now. Yeah. Then, governor's allegations inaccurate, shameless, untrue. That's Son Olu replying yeah, Ambode. Yeah. Tinibu endorses Songolu, says Ambode deviated from Lagos' master plan. Wow. Yeah, I think talking about this, this, this very important headline, uh, I think that Lagos is too exposed and wise to allow a certain individual mm -hmm. to dictate to them who becomes their governor. Year in, year out, <laughs> one person must anoint you before you become governor. <laughs> I think that this thing that is happening is for a purpose, and I'm glad that it's happening because uh, very soon now, uh, maybe it has come. It, there is an end to an era here, exactly. Exactly. where people can now begin to choose their own person who mm. becomes their governor, not uh, some certain individual. Okay, we also have the House of Reps in Lagos, the House of Reps caucus yeah. endorses Songwolu. Councillors reaffirm support for Abode. So we are seeing a divided house now. Exactly. The house anyway. is divided. So the yes. primaries, eventually when it takes place, yes. we will be able to know. As regards that, we, we got this money that the primaries have been shifted. Shifted again. Yes. Anyway, let's okay. move on. Another five killed in Plateau as violence spreads. Seven killed in Benue. Yeah. So the killings are still on. On. The killings are still on. This is unfortunate. If the primary responsibility of the government is, is to protect life and Certainly. properties of the citizens, mm. and then these things are happening every day, I, I don't know where we are going. You could see why I say we might not have reason to celebrate. To celebrate. In fact, I watched a clip of students running Helter Skelter yesterday in the University of Joss because of this same crisis. Wow. Wow. So um, uh, we, are not dead. we are not there yet. Wow. 
Okay, coming to um, primaries now. Explosion in Paracourt as APC conducts parallel Guba primaries. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and there there like, again. There we go again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, let's move on. Nigeria at 58. Nigeria on unstoppable progress. That's Pastor Kumi talking. As Osibanjo invokes God's blessing. So they are praying, right? You see, that <laughs> is what we, lead, we love to do. Nigeria is a very religious country. We are fond of praying, mm. praying for everything. Mm. You see, if prayer can do everything for us, Nigeria will have been the most beautiful <laughs> nation in the world. Exactly, we, exactly. We, must, we must work and change certain orientations. Mm. And determine that things should get better. We shouldn't just we shouldn't just stop at praying. At praying. We should do the work. Uh, but prayer is very very important. Very really. nice, but uh, we should yeah. do the work. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, I are, think are that's you done all with from Nigerian Tribune. Yes. Yes. Okay. So let's go to the nations. Mm. Uh, we also have uh, some very interesting headlines here. Okay. One of them is uh, ten feared dead in just violence. Hmm. And you could see that there There's we a have discrepancy here. Yeah, right what what we have? We have uh, five killed in Plateau mm -hmm. here. Well, we here have we have ten. ten. Wow. Then um, number two, independence, Nigeria on the right path, says Buhari. Buhari. <laughs> Are we really on the right path? I think Charles, what do you think? <laughs> that's left for Nigeria. <laughs> That is why I'm asking you as a Nigerian, <laughs> okay. if we are on the right path. Um, let's ask Nigerians. Nigerians, are we on the right path? <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, then they repeated the headline there, Tinubu bags Shonwolu for mm. Lagos State APC ticket. Then here also, we have governorship candidates. Mm from various states, APC yes, um, and PDP, yes. yes. We have Adebayo, Adelabu, Oyo, APC, Nasir Erufai, Kaduna, APC, mm. Aboka Bello, Baoshi, APC, Shehi Makende, Oyo, APC, I mean PDP. Okay. Yes, on Wiki, Rivers, PDP, Okeze, mm. Ipazu, um, Abia, PDP. Dan here, Sokoto, PDP. If I Uguayi, Inugu, PDP. Ben Ayede, Cross River, PDP. Mm. David Umahe, Eboni, PDP. And, and uh, we also have Umar Nasco, Udom Emmanuel, Akwaibon, PDP. And Sima Ekere, Akwaibon. Mm, okay. uh, wow. So these are basically what we have. Uh, in the, the, the nations. The results of the primaries. Yeah, the okay, results um, of the primaries. Um, just before we move on to the next one, can you, is there, um, we, we, we can see there most of the incumbent governors imagine winners yes, of the primaries. Yes, it's like, um, you know, Nigeria, according to the constitution, you can contest for the second time. Okay. You have four, and if you do well, you can also have another form. So mm. that is what is playing out here. It's okay. like they're giving them opportunity for continuity. Yeah, that is, okay. if they have done very well, they should continue on the good work okay. they, they've done before. Okay. So um, Nigerians will decide Nigerians, if they will exactly. come for the second time <laughs> or not. Exactly. Mm. Okay, let's move on to Punch. Um, Punch has um, some of the headlines you already um, read on the other papers. So, okay, I can see an independent speech from Buhari here. Yeah. I will continue to work for a united Nigeria. Buhari promises. Has <laughs> he been working for a united okay. Nigeria? I will still leave that to Nigeria to answer. Yeah, well, 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 personally, with what I'm seeing, mm. I don't think so. I stand to be corrected. Wow. We are not working, he is not working for united Nigeria because mm. certain parts of this country is favored over the other. Over the other. And if you can remember his statement mm. in one, one of his trips abroad, that uh, those who gave him 97% percent. will not be the same thing with those who gave him 5%. And that has always played out since he started. So mm. telling us that he work for the unity, well, I don't know whether he's lobbying, we should give him 2019 <laughs> so that uh, work Maybe for the Maybe the unity. way uh, unity we understand is not the same one. Oh, that he's referring <laughs> to, right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, let's move on. Here with me is Daily Sun. Sun. 
and then we have governorship primaries 2019 erufai nasco bello wiki wins ticket Okay. Then we also have another one. They say APC posting fake primary results wow. for Buhari. <laughs> and uh, is the major Guess opposition party that they say uh, in opposition. this PDP. <laughs> what do you think? Um, because from some of the clips I watched, the way they were doing this counting, wow. and some of the 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 the... the the total number of voters coming from the state is mm. alarming. Wow. Very, very high. Wow. It's as if in the whole Kano, if you remember the last election, 2015, mm -hmm. Kano got two point something million exactly. votes, right? Exactly. Think one as a whole, highest. voting for president, two point something million, million. votes. Now, APC alone is, uh, is having 3.9. Wow. Does it mean everybody <laughs> in Kano Voted is a member of APC? <laughs> APC. <laughs> so it's as if wow. that something is wow. uh, PDP wrong might not be wrong after all. Yeah, of and course, <laughs> of course. Then APC presidential primaries, Carlos uh, LG, that is local government, gives mm. Buari highest vote. Mm. Nigeria at 58. No quick fix fixes shortcuts to thriving democracy uh mm. buari is saying this and um, the question is how long does he need to <laughs> fix some of the things that he need to fix oh my god um it, uh, um reports um said recently that if we are not careful mm. we might be sliding back into recession recession so i don't know is the the current administration are they really fixing are they, uh, is there is there progress <sighs> According so, to uh, what he said, mm -hmm, probably mm -hmm. is lobbying for more time. Yes, yeah. Exactly, exactly. Mm. They will always okay. tell you that uh, it's not it's not easy to fix what has been. <laughs> you <laughs> understand exactly, that language? Exactly. It has exactly. spoiled over time, so we are coming to fix it. We've heard the blame games exactly, all over and all over. Exactly. And Nigerians expected, they voted, and they are expecting. They expected, and they are still expecting. Results. Yes. Results. When they give you opportunity, they are not giving you opportunity to give excuses. Hmm. They give you opportunity to so, come and correct the wrong exactly, exactly. that uh, has been there to, to make it right. Things that were wrong, make hmm. it right and stop giving excuses. Okay. Um. The um. Also in Vanguard here, Independence the interdenominational church service had um lots of uh people in attendance. We had the wow. head of uh, civil service of the Federation, Mrs. Winifred Oyoita, yeah. Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Walter Onogen, and his wife. Then we have former head of state, Governor Yakubu Gawon. We had um, Vice President Osibanjo and his wife. They yeah. were there. The Secretary um, to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, was also there. What do you okay. think this means for Nigeria? Well, it's, it's good that uh, whatever we do, once in a while, we come together to pray and ask God for direction, mm -hmm. just like David did when there were problems. David, the Bible says that David inquired of the Lord. Yes. In 1 Samuel uh, 30, verse uh, 8, David inquired of the Lord and God said, please go ahead, pursue, overtake, and recover. Okay. And, uh, um, Let's just run because of our time. 2019, Benue stands still for David Mack as Kwang Pasu vows to end the insurgency in his Independence Day um, message. Yeah. Well, Unai Emery hails Iwobi. That's yeah. our own Iwobi there. Yeah, and, um, it's good to, to hear that our <laughs> own is being held. <laughs> exactly. So probably he's doing well there. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Um, Morinho could be sacked this week. Wow. Wow. Um, yeah. this, this season has not really been yeah, good for Yeah, he's Mourinho been having relationship Mourinho. problems with, with, the with the players. And, and, and that is what you can get. When exactly. there is a division in the house, mm. the house will fall. So I won't be surprised if he's sacked. <laughs> because you have to manage this. You, you, you are j not just the boss. You are like a father figure. Hmm. These people are under you, so exactly. you manage them. Manage. Um, you are them. a manager, so hmm. try to manage them 
and then don't begin to fight with players in public. Okay. And Sally, that is what you can get. When players discover that uh, our, our coach does not value us. Okay, um, <clears throat> Guardiola plots 200 million pounds Mbappe swoop wow, wow, <laughs> in January. Wow. 200 million pounds. pounds. Can we change that into Naira? <laughs> okay. It's like uh, my son will play football. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll need, to, I'll need to go play football myself. <laughs> yeah, it's over for you. You're an old man now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Women's World Cup. Um, FIBA president thumbs up for the deep digress. They have really been doing well yeah, they, they recently. They have progressed very well. Yes, yes. That's good. Kudos to them. Okay. Um, that's that on uh, major newspaper headlines that we have here. Okay, moving on to the independence, we want to play you um, a video of the history of Nigeria, you know, spanning from the pre-colonial era. So please stay tuned. Remember, we have a lot in stock for you. Nigeria. The most populous nation in Africa, with nearly 200 million people a variety of spoken languages, including the third largest English-speaking population on Earth, has a long history stretching back to the oldest identified civilization in West Africa, known today as the Nok culture. They were master sculptors in a variety of materials, ranging from terracotta to bronze. The Nok were centuries ahead of their neighbors, and were smelting iron weapons by at least 550 BC, and perhaps as early as 1000 BC. This enabled the Nok to hold influence over an area northeast of the Niger River, as large as modern-day France. Although little is known about the Nok, their trade routes exporting bronze and gold reached all the way to Western Europe. Unfortunately, since the 1970s, there has been a large amount of looting, of Nok sites. In the 1990s, some crews employed over a thousand diggers each day, with Nok sculpture showing up in Europe, the US, and Japan. The Nok disappeared as mysteriously as they arrived. However, their knowledge in sophisticated metallurgy and mining techniques would be passed down to successor civilizations. The powerful Yoruba city of Ife would perfect casting techniques, creating realistic portraits of their nobles and leaders that have survived till today. The sophisticated level of realism captured in metal, not seen since the classical world, would not be matched elsewhere until the Italian Renaissance. Ife was ruled by Oni, a line of divine kings said to be descended from a god. The last prince of the Yoruba city of Ife would found the Oyo kingdom that reached its height around 1400 and maintain long distance trading routes, protected by the kingdom's formidable cavalry force. To the southwest, the Edo people of the Empire of Benin would also learn metallurgy techniques from the Ife, and constructed one of the most impressive feats of engineering and the largest earthenware structure ever erected, the Walls of Benin, which enclosed an area of over 2,500 square miles. In all, over 9,000 miles of walls comprise this megastructure. Combined with their formidable military, it is no wonder why the Kingdom of Benin was incredibly stable and prosperous over such a long period of time. To the north of Edo, according to legend, was a kingdom ruled over by a line of female queens, one of whom married an adventuring hero from Baghdad in modern-day Iraq. Their sons would rule over a collection of powerful city-states. Over the centuries, House of Land would unite for short periods of time. However, squabbling and intrigue was the norm. Throughout this period, they maintained amicable relations with the Mali Empire, their economic competitor to the northwest where many Islamic clerics migrated from to join the courts of the Islamic urban elite of the Hausa kingdoms. The Igbo kingdom of Nuri was ruled by a priest king and expanded its territory through sending converts to spread their faith in surrounding cities and towns. The kingdom reached its furthest extent between 11 and 1400, encroached upon by the rise of Benin and later the Atlantic slave trade. It appears to have maintained its authority well into the 16th century and remnants of the religious hierarchy persisted until the establishment of colonial Nigeria. Jukun and Igala were two other formidable kingdoms that arose in the 14th century, and by the 16th, Igala was waging war on the Kingdom of Benin, challenging their longtime supremacy and commercial trade in the region, and with the arrival of the Portuguese, became involved in the inception of the transatlantic slave trade. From the 1500s through 1800s, many of the kingdoms in this region became extremely wealthy through the trade in precious metals and slaves. 
However, as the abolishment of the slave trade became widespread throughout the Western world, their fortunes began to stagnate. In 1804, the Sokoto Caliphate would conquer and unite the Hausa kingdoms. At its height, the Caliphate linked over 30 different emirates and was populated by over 10 million people, forming the most powerful state in the region. In his conquest, it captured approximately 2.5 million non-Muslim slaves, whom they put to work in large plantations and heavily incentivized to convert to a more comfortable life. In 1851, under the pretext of ending the slave trade in the Kingdom of Lagos, the British bombarded the city and installed a ruler they favored. Ten years later, they annexed the city in 1861, establishing the Crown Colony of Lagos. Lagos has been a prosperous commercial center ever since. The Royal Niger Company was established in 1879 to administer the region, and by 1900 had conquered all of southern Nigeria, destroying much of the fabled walls of Benin. The company was disestablished that same year, the Protectorate of Southern Nigeria was established, and the conquest of the Sokoto Empire began in 1900. And by 1903, all of modern-day Nigeria was under British control. The colony and Protectorate of Nigeria lasted for 46 years, and was governed through a system called indirect rule, where regional emirs and local rulers were given wide authority as long as the colonial government was allowed to conduct its business and gather taxation. In 1960, the First Republic of Nigeria obtained its independence from the British Empire, which was weakened after fighting the Second World War. In 1967, the Republic of Bifra was declared in the southeast of Nigeria, fueled by the persecution of the Igbo living in northern Nigeria, and control over the lucrative oil production in the Niger Delta played a major role in fueling this conflict, that saw over 150,000 soldiers killed and millions displaced. The Civil War initiated a series of military leaders of Nigeria, lasting after the Civil War had ended with the United Nigeria. Following the assassination of General Murtala Mohammed, his successor initiated a process of disestablishing military rule and bringing back a republic. This republic was short-lived, lasting from 1979 to 1983, when it was overthrown again. After eight years of rule by General Ibrahim, he re-established a democracy, that lasted for less than a year, which was overthrown by General Sani Abacha. Abacha died mysteriously and was buried without an autopsy. His successor again re-established a democracy that has lasted till the current day. All right, thank you for staying tuned. It's still the Independence Day special program on ACNN. And, uh, uh, I have a guest in the studio, uh, possibly you've seen his face before, there is a regular analyst, <laughs> Reverend Canon uh, Benjamin Agbejume. Well done, sir. Thank you very much. Happy, happy Independence. I wish you the same uh, and happy month of uh, October. October. <laughs> happy New Month. Thank well, you very I much. I still have in the studio Reverend Canon Smart. Dali. Yeah. Uh, we are happy to have you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you All right. for having And um, me. I have online uh, uh, from South Africa, I have uh, Dr. Samuel Olaliko. He's a public analyst, a software developer, and a lecturer in South Africa. Uh, Dr. Sam, I hope you are still there with us. Yeah. Yes, okay. I'm here with you. Thank um, you. Thank you for having me. We will we'll just take uh, a look into some aspects of uh, Nigeria. Uh, looking at how we have uh, failed for 58 years, assessing Nigeria at, in terms of economy, security, education, health, and uh, infrastructure. But I think before we just go ahead, uh, uh, let's look at um, uh, some video clip from uh, uh, the primates and some residents of Abuja. Uh, that, that, that should now set us on, on the pace. So uh, uh, let's go ahead and watch this. We want to talk about the Chibo girls and Leah. Uh, you are aware of the issues at stake now that these terrorists are becoming more and more daring and more and more desperate. We don't want this girl to be killed, should I go? We, we, we don't want her to be killed. The Chibok girls, we want to appeal to government 
to make more efforts to get these people released so that they can rejoin their families after so many years of harrowing experiences. We plead with government that no sacrifice is too much to get this girl released. Otherwise, it will become a black spot in our history. Minimum wage. The Standing Committee wishes to commend the federal government for their concern for workers, especially with the move to review the minimum wage. The government is hereby urged to quickly do the needful, as promised, to relieve the workers and reduce the poverty level in the land. General elections. As we see 2019 drawing closer, we wish to call on our political leaders and all politicians seeking elective positions to remember that power comes only from God. And whatever we do, the peace of the nation must be preserved because in a war situation, everybody will be affected. Nigerians are still yearning for the dividends of democracy as promised before. Therefore, new promises should be weighed against the background of available resources to ensure delivery. The Standing Committee wishes to urge INEC to work harder to make all the processes and eventual elections as smooth as possible and to remain an unbiased umpire in this race to determine Nigeria's destiny. Whatever we disenfranchise any Nigerian should not come from INEC and should be avoided by all. We urge all eligible citizens to get ready to vote in the general elections. Your vote is your power and your vote will count. We call on the armed forces and all other security agencies to conduct the affairs of the 2019 general elections with the future of Nigeria in mind. Finally, we call on our people not only to ensure that they vote but to also strive for elective positions to be voted for. Not too young to run bail. The not too young to run bail was heralded with so much zest. We recognize this step as a good development at a time like this. However, as good as it may be, it is not going to solve any problems automatically. The Nigerian brand of politics has, over the years, not been on ideas and ideals. Rather, it has been driven by personality and money. Ethnic and religious biases have also played roles. With the not too young to run be a past, we call on the young people not to be discouraged but join in the struggle and look forward to the future with hope. The concept of independence is very, very and somehow polemic because it depends from the angle in which you are looking at it. In a, in, in a literary sense, we just say freedom. That once a country has been able to secure her independence, you said it's a sovereign nation, then such a society or country rather it's an independent state. Politically, uh, if, as a lawyer, I know we are independent because we have instruments indicating that we are independent. But in the actual sense of it, we are yet to be independent. We are yet to be independent. In terms of economy, in time, well, even when you look at it economically, we are not yet independent. We are, we are still depending on other nations to survive. Even our economic policy must always be tied with the foreign policy of other nations. That shows we are, we are yet to be independent on our own. Although the need be for uh, foreign relations, but we depend solely on them. I want to see depend solely on other nations to survive. Then the, the concept of independence will now be a subject of debate, whether actually we have that independence or not. The first thing we have to first of all realize that we have problems with our nation. 
and they need B to restructure the system. So where everybody will be happy, and until that one is achieved, we may practically find it, uh, find it very difficult to uphold the concept of our independence. Because independence is not just what we just wake up in the morning and say we are independent. Then we need to ask ourselves how independent we are in economy. Then we need to restructure the nation politically, economically, and in terms of our education. Our education has to be looked into as well. Let me give you an example. Most of our laws that we still have today, they were laws given to us by our colonial masters. If you are still using law of olden days, how do we expect something better of? Let me give you an example. We have changed Nigerian police uniform nearly almost five times. But despite the fact, we are yet to amend the law that creates the institutions. If the law is actually enacted in 1943, and we are yet to amend it up to this very moment, then how sure are we when we say we are independent? So we still rely heavily on what they gave to us. That is my own perception, sir. The sovereignty of Nigeria is not in doubt as per Nigeria is independent of its sovereignty. You can, you can tell Nigerians that, oh, as far as Nigeria is concerned, we are independent of other nations. In principle, yes, we are independent. And you can, in terms of governance, we are also independent. But you... If you use the word whether we are independent indeed, I will say no. Because we still depend on so many other persons, so many other countries in reaching some decisions that we want to take. And so when you come to governance, we are not we, 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 we seem to be influenced by what happened in other countries to take decisions on what concerns us here. When you, you talk about economics and uh, uh, the economy of Nigeria, we are not independent because we are still depending on other nations for our our daily um, supplies. We can we cannot manufacture car of our own. We cannot manufacture even simplest thing that you can think that as a country we can manufacture. We can get. We are just consumers, consumers, consumers. We are not producers. So to that extent, I will say that in that area, Nigeria is not independent at all. Nigeria is not where it ought to be at 58. Someone of 58 years is already approaching retirement if it were to be in the public service. And so if at 58 we are still where we are today, then we are not, ready, we are not really ready to grow. So at 58, one should be thinking that, oh, even though we are not somewhere where we ought to be, we should have a road map, something that will show us, okay, we have a direction. This is where we are going. And... From the roadmap, you will be able to know, okay, what and what and what have we achieved? What is remaining for us to achieve? But where we are today, we are going, we, today we we'll go forward, you see us move forward. The next day, you see us drop backward again. So we don't have a roadmap. There is no defined um, roadmap to, for Nigeria for us to be able to know, okay, this is where we are going. So even at 58, we are still... Rolling. We don't even know exactly where we want to be. Ask uh, uh, the, people, the people who are leading us, in the next five years, where do you think Nigeria will be? You will discover that they, don't, they cannot give you answer. They cannot just give you answer. And when you talk of development, countries move with projections. Countries move with projections. They should be able to know, okay, by the next five years, these are the number of students who will enter university. These are the number of students who will graduate. This is the number of available um, jobs that we are going to create by so-so-so number of years. So that projection is what will help a country to grow. But as we have today, we don't just understand data, information we don't have. We don't just know where we are really going. So I think I need to call on those who are leading us. Define exactly where you think Nigeria should be. At 58, we are not anywhere. You say independence, which means you are, a, you are a country of your own. You don't depend on any other countries for support or any other thing. With what is happening in this country, I don't think we've attained the status that we can be said to become an uh, independent country. Yeah, let's start from the economy. Nigeria is now the, the poorest country in the world, where you have the highest number of poor people. If you take countries like Afghanistan that have been ravaged by war, the, the world indices has never prescribed them to become 
one of the most uh, the poorest country in the world. So for Nigeria to be uh, termed as a country that has the largest number of uh, 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 poor people, so I don't think Nigeria is there yet. You talk about the 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 the, the policy. Look at the just concluded uh, election in Oshun State. The international community have confirmed that that was a charade. But you see, the Nigerian government they are they are they are, they are celebrating it. Even the president, to the extent of uh, congratulating the winner, everybody knows that that was not really an election. And you say we are an independent country. What do we have to show for it? Nothing. Well, uh, two things. Yes, it was celebrating one that we are all alive to say today. 58 years is not a joke and uh, we really need to appreciate God for that and uh, no matter how bad it is we must always give thanks to God that we are alive to see today and uh, I believe that whatever thing it is it's worth celebrating we have to thank God for it notwithstanding in the true sense of it we are not independent and many things ought to be done in order for us to be independent and this is where our leaders comes in they have to find, out, first of all, develop ideas. What, we, what would they do to make Nigeria move forward? And on, on, when they will get that, that is only when we can say that, yes, indeed, we are independent. Unemployment is something that uh, we cannot overemphasize. It's everywhere, especially in Nigeria. You will see a graduate coming out, there is no job. The issue of privatization of jobs, people giving jobs to the people they know. That is corruption. And that is not the essence of politics. The essence of politics is to come and govern people well, create job opportunities, and see that things are good within well, Nigeria, so that citizens can live well. But the case is the reverse in Nigeria. And that was the view of uh, most Nigerians on the streets today. And uh, I think that will set a pace of how <laughs> things yeah. are going. Uh, yes. Uh, Dr. Sam, I, 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 I hope you are there. Let me just start with you. Um, you, you, you are in South Africa, and uh, I know that um, as, a, as a lecturer and a public analyst, how will you uh, assess Nigeria at 58? Uh, I will give Nigeria at least 6 out of 10. 6 out of 10? Yes. Okay, so ca ca can you can you expand it more? Uh, looking at, um, uh, let me know how you have graded. You fine, thank God you are a lecturer. So <laughs> let me, let me know your marking scheme. <laughs> you see, if you if you if you if you if you look at where we are, yeah, we although although we are old, but uh, at, at a point in time, Nigeria is like a it's like a man. Who, who used to be a rich person, but because of his way of flamboyant life, has uh, squandered everything that he had. And then in the process of squandering everything he has, he went into drinking. And mm. at age 58, he was found by uh, an NGO, a non-governmental organization, mm. who is specialized in rehabilitating people who are addicted to not only alcohol but to drug, to drug abuse. So uh, at, at the moment, we are currently a 58-year-old man that is going through rehabilitation. And so the, the stage at which that 58-year-old man is now is that he is picking up all the things that has crumbled for him, hmm. all the pieces that he has lost and is gathering them together. And we will all know that that we obviously take time to rebuild. So, but looking at the progress that that man has made uh, in the past three years, or almost four years that he has been on the rehabilitation drug. Okay, I mean, you, you, are, you, are, you are referring to the current president that. as the person rehabilitating the country right now? Exactly. Okay. Okay. Uh, now, let, let me take you on this. Uh, being a lecturer in South Africa and um, having grown up uh, in Nigeria to your university stage, and co, uh, uh, how will you rate the education system? Oh, uh, 
the education system in, in South Nigeria. Africa can definitely, I mean, Nigeria can definitely not be compared to what we have in South Africa. On a scale of, uh, on a ratio of one, I'll, I'll say it's a ratio of one to 100. Mm, that's bad? At the moment. Mm, very, it, it, it is very bad. Mm. Hey. And, uh, okay, and uh, actually this is the same Africa country, and uh, so if, if we are rating uh, one to 100, uh, that's South Africa and Nigeria. Uh, uh, rating uh, UK and Co should be... <laughs> one to 1,000. <laughs> it should be one to 1,000. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, Dr. Sam, let me just... Uh, let me take my guest here in the studio. So, uh, Reverend Gallo, look at uh, the key areas of um, 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 governance since the independence till now. What will you say you are seeing? Seriously, if uh, I have my way to advise a president, this uh, year, October 1st, calls for sober reflection. Mm. Nigeria is supposed to be mourning. Nigeria not, not, jubilating. not jubilating. Nigeria is supposed to be mourning mm. and weeping. Because as a man, at 58, mm. at 58, when you are supposed to be looking after your grandchildren, but rather you are still a child, a baby, mm. being, being fed. fed, fundamentally it means something is what is wrong. Mm. Because if you look at Every segment of our national life, mm. you will discover that is on the downward trend. <laughs> is it education? Is it infrastructure? Mm. Is it uh, even the corruption, the fight against corruption the president is uh, celebrating? Look at the electoral processes in the country. Look at uh, job creation. Mm. Look at the uh, economy. In which area of our national life? Look at security. Is the president happy that he's celebrating the death of those that were massacred in Benue? Is the president celebrating those who were murdered in cold blood in Just. Kaduna? Yeah, yeah, Is the yeah. president celebrating those even currently, as we are talking, people are still being killed in Joss. Mm. What a failure. Nigeria should be weeping. Mm. Today is supposed to be a black day for Nigeria, not a day of celebration. We have nothing to show. <laughs> to me, I am seriously, seriously not happy. Hmm. Okay. With the president, and even the last uh, person that commented and uh, uh, celebrating uh, the president, giving the president six over ten, my brother. <laughs> What's thank your God, meeting? thank God, is in South Africa telling us that uh, uh, comparing the education standard in Nigeria and that of South Africa is one to hundred. Mm. Now, if you say one to hundred, does that mean yeah. that Nigeria, because when you say one to hundred, is <laughs> is a the, vote of no confidence. Yeah, but you said the, uh, the, the, the current president is rehabilitated. Is the current president not part of those who plundered this country? Mm. Okay. <laughs> no, <laughs> let's... Okay, no. let's, 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 let, me, let me take you on the... Now, let, now let's look at uh, let's look at the issue of uh, uh, security. Uh, thank God you, you read some parts of the newspaper where people are being killed and being killed. Uh, should Nigeria still be passing through some of this? Now, a, a lot of people have said terrorism and some of these things is a global thing. So, but do you think uh, the, the the country has done well in terms of security? Not just even assessing this present government, but yeah, over 58 over, years. Over the years. Yes. Uh, let me start by saying that uh, by every standard, Nigeria is a blessed nation. Okay. And we have all the resources 
mm. to be the most enviable country in the world. But we are unenviable. No country in the world we envy Nigeria and want to be like Nigeria. Nothing to learn from us. Mm. I'm talking about the security. It has gone bad more than how it used to be. We were safer before mm. than now. Because right now, even police stations are being attacked. Police are being killed. So yes, I mean. Armies in Wolf or in the, in the Northeast, armies themselves are not safe. And that is why they are even committing mutiny. They will send you to go. You will say, I will not go. You want me to go out and be killed? Now, if security agencies are not safe, my brother, me and you, <laughs> we, we, you know where, 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 where how we it will be? Hmm. As at yesterday, day before yesterday, and today, people are being killed in Benue and Plateau State. About 14 died in Benue. Someone just used motorcycle and just came and started shooting people. Hmm. That of just is there. Students being killed and, and, and what have you. And the government will come to tell us that Boko Haram has been technically defeated. We did not vote for government to technically defeat anything. We want them to be completely defeated. defeated. Hmm. Okay, uh, uh, Dr. Dr. Sam, if you are still there, uh, I, I, I know that you, you were in Nigeria a um, few weeks ago. Now, let's go to the issue of inf infrastructure. Yeah. Um, what will you say com compared to what you have over there, what you have seen thus far? Yeah. So, uh, if you, if you, the truth to be told, truth be told, what we have in South Africa is actually competing with what they have in, in, in the first world country. So, you cannot compare what we have in, in Nigeria with what we have in South Africa again. Mm. And uh, if you look at some of the polls that I've made, I've, I've, I've made uh, on, on social media, I've made this comparison. But I, I think I need to remind the reverend uh, that spoke earlier that refer, reverend is our spiritual father. And reverend should know that there's difference between what we're doing today that's why I try to liken Nigeria to human being. There's the, when, when you are celebrating your birthday, your parents, your relatives, and every other friend that you have would not be artists before. Because you are this, because you are that. You should be mourning because of all, all the past things that have happened to you. I think the focus, as, as our spiritual father, with all humility and all due respect, sir, should basically be encouraging somebody that is, uh, that is actually trying to, to come up into the spiritual life. And also to our second speaker. It's a, it's, it's a work in progress. I think the mistake that we made as a, as a nation was actually the fact that we were promised heaven and half in 2015 mm. and we all believe in those promises exactly <laughs> the, 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 pro the problem that nigeria was undergoing before 2015 if, if if anybody follows me very well on social media immediately after Buhari emerged i made that very stern warning that all the problems that we are facing is not something that can be fixed in eight years but we need a committed person that can show commitment which is what we are seeing in this current uh, government. Buhari has made a lot of mistakes. His administration has made a lot of mistakes. There's no doubt about that. But you see, the truth of the matter is the uh, first government are not focusing on the, on, the, on, on the good deeds that they have done. We are not going to go anywhere. That is why, because because of the fact that we are focusing on the mystic, mm. we allowed ourselves to be emotional. And because we are emotional, we are listening to every form of fake news out there. 
you could see there's there's still killing in Benry. Yeah. There's still killing in Jaws. There's still killing in everywhere. But the truth of the matter is most of this killing, sometimes most of them are not actually the people that were saying that we were saying that they perpetrated the killing. Most of them are not. Most of these killings are sponsored by politicians. And in 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 in, in, in political war, yeah. strategy is needed. Strategy is needed when you are fighting a political war. You don't just go back, I mean go to people and say, You are the person that killed this person. We need we we, we need a lot of evidences. But when it comes to infrastructure, this government is trying a lot, trying to build infrastructure. But the same people that this government is building infrastructure for, for are the same people that are saying, we don't need infrastructure, we need money, we need food. Give us food. The same people that these people are fighting, the, the government is fighting corruption for, are the same people that say, we don't want you to fight corruption. We want you to, you want you to create jobs, we want you to do this. Don't fight corruption. If you don't fight corruption, how are you going to create jobs? If you don't fight corruption, how are you going to create, I mean, develop infrastructure in the country? So, it, like I said, the truth of the matter is we are not there. We are not there yet. And for, every, for anybody to be thinking Nigeria's problem that was created, let's leave, let's leave what has happened between 1960 and 1999 aside. Between 1999 and 2015 is 16 years. You think somebody that has been badly damaged for 16 years will be rehabilitated in less than four years. If, if we think so, then we are joking. Okay, let, 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 yeah, me, but, says, let, let me ask you something. You, you, you said the killings that are going on are perpetrated by politicians. But the question has been that, as a responsible government, can't these people be named or be arrested? Very correct. Very, very, very good question, sir. You, you see, in a democratic government, the democratic government is a government in which rule of law takes a lot of processes. So if you come to my house, let us, let us assume that I'm the one killing in Lagos. You cannot arrest me despite the fact that I'm the one killing if you don't have evidence. You keep on working on intelligence. Government does not work like we people work when we say these people are corrupt, despite the fact that we don't have evidence against their corruption. When we get to court, the court will ask for the evidence. That where is the evidence? Those are some of the things. That's why. But 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 do, but do you think that the intelligence system of this country is good enough? Because um, or let me see investigative aspects, or, uh, or or we can also brand it as a, a intelligence gathering. Is it strong enough? Because if for three and a half years going to four. You cannot just bring one person, one person to book. How many years will it take to kill people and to get uh, those that are killing? Very, very good question, and I'm, and I'm going to be honest with you. I think that is where our government, this current government, is getting it wrong. The intelligence system is totally not good enough. I'm going to be honest with that. The intelligence system is not good enough, and I think the government... The government needs to find a way of solving that that particular uh, problem. That being said, government a, a, a government basically is run by the people. As people, we don't we don't work together with the government. Mm. You say the the, the the religious body, the clan, do not work together with the government. The, the Muslim, I, I don't know the, uh, the, the, the name under which they, they, they don't work with the government. The media, they don't work with the government. Khan, for instance, is always quick to go to the media. They are always quick to go to the media and show their displeasure. And, mm. and how many times has Bishop David Oedipo raised a letter inside his church only to realize that that letter that he raised, that were, were purportedly written by, by eight men, were fake. And that was raised by a man that commands huge respect within the country. That when he says, go, almost all of us who are Christian would not say, why should we go? We'll just say, how far should we go? 
And this same man got a letter that was written by fake people, by people who are trying to bring the government down. And the, the man raised the letter inside the church and said we should pray against the letter. And after raising up the letter, about a week later, they realized that the letter was fake. Hmm. Okay, 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 let me, <laughs> let me, okay, let me, let me come back. It is not only let, let, uh, Dr. Sam, let me just come back to the studio uh, while wh wh you're listening to us. Uh, he, he, he said the government is not doing well in terms of intelligence. Uh, do you feel this is actually a, a, a point that should be worked on? Well, obviously, I listen to my brother from South Africa and I like dwelling on specifics. Mm -hmm. If you look at each area of our national life, let's look at security. Yes. When the problem in Benue started, the killings in Benue started, the man, the governor then, came out to the old world and said, before the killing started, he reported uh, to the president, to the vice president, and even to the security chiefs, nothing was done. So it means it was deliberate. Mm. Even the threat by the Mieti Allah uh, Association uh, leader, the president refused to take any action. Then if you look at even when the killings were perpetuated in Benue, and the Inspector General of Police was asked to go there, directed by the president to go there. The president came out to say that, yes, the president, uh, Inspector General of Police that he thought was in Benue did not go to Benue. What action after, did he take? The pres uh, Inspector General of Police is still the Inspector General of Police still today. <laughs> now, let's look at other areas of security. Mm. You look at that of Kaduna, Satan Kaduna, and all those areas that uh, the killings are taking place. What action, has been taken. what effort has this president taken? Now, this is my brother from uh, South Africa. Thank God he's a lecturer. <laughs> As a lecturer in South Africa, under what condition and environment do you lecture your students? Now, we have a president and a government that we go to school and feed children that are sitting on the floor. <laughs> Doesn't make sense. On a very terrible and bad environment. With open roof. Look at our universities. Hardly you can see a foreigner in any of our universities. All our universities have been localized. Go to uh, uh, Amandu Bello University. 99% of students here are houses. Look at uh, uh, Ife. Look at Ibadan. 99% of students you will see there are Yorubas. Go to uh, UNN. The same thing. If people from one other regions cannot patronize a university in another region within a country, do you say that there is unity in that country? <laughs> do you say Nigeria is one? You cannot even talk of seeing students from our neighboring countries patronizing our universities. Not to talk of even uh, foreign lecturers now. <laughs> the only areas you can see for foreign lecturers, then you will talk of private universities. universities yes. But government-owned universities, you cannot see any. So I want to ask that, my brother, because <laughs> let's be realistic. And no, no, let's look at the economy mm. and even the fight against corruption mm. that is talking about that the president is doing well. Now, if you look, uh, 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 at, fight, if you look, if you look at the fight against corruption, where is Mena? Some years ago or some months ago, Ibe Kashuku raised the alarm of contract awarded secretly running into billions. Mm -hmm. But the group managing director of NNPC, where is the case today? 
Look at that of uh, the minister of finance that recently resigned. The case has been <laughs> look at the <laughs> look at. No, we can count on and on in this same government. Even the secretary to the federal government who okay. used two hundred okay. something million to cut. Where let are me, they? What are we me, celebrating? We are me, celebrating mediocrity. Let me take this call uh, from Kaduna. Isaac from Kaduna. Okay, this is your. Are you the there? The man is deliberating on issue of university in the, in the nation. Where a particular zone like ABU is only the outside schooling there in Lagos, the southwest only the Yoruba, the east only the Igbo. It's a very very essential issue. When you apply for admission, you will have one two hundred and twenty. You will not be given admission in the north. Why somebody in the north will be given admission with one eighty? Likewise to the southwest, likewise to the east. It's it's a very good issue. And they should talk about the issue very, very well. So to say to it finally, and let it be said to finally. All right, thank you, Isaac from Kaduna. <laughs> he's just, no, let, he's let just me, making. Yes. Then let's look at our electoral system mm. because we are talking about independence. Yeah. In the first place, is Nigeria really an independent country? There is yeah. nothing like independence. <laughs> let, we, me, we, uh, let, let, let me let me allow uh, uh, Canon Smart to also breeze in before we uh, now now look at let's go back to this issue of security. A lot of people have accused this government of nepotism. Previous governments too have been seen to have squandered money that are meant to save life. Yeah. Is there a problem? in the security system? There is a problem in the security system. Uh, our security personnel has left the job of securing lives and properties to partisan politics. But can, can, can it actually be their fault or the fault of uh, 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 the leaders who possibly doesn't give them what is right? That is, welfare. That is certain things in this in our constitution that is wrong. Okay. The idea of uh, for you to become a chief security of a certain agency, you must be appointed by the president. And because it is the president that appoints you, your loyalty goes to him. I mean, this thing did not start today. Every president who appoints, either chief of army staff, chief of air staff, or head of DSS, or head of Nigeria Intelligence Agency, they are all loyal to the president, and it is not right. The constitution should be, should be amended in such a way that you grow through the ranks, you become, so that your loyalty is not to a certain person. But to the country, you should defend the constitution. You should do what is constitution constitutionally right, and not that uh, whatever the president wants. Want. That is what you should do, and that is why we have we've gotten it wrong. I want us to look at other countries of the world. Is that how they do things? How many security chiefs have Donald Trump changed, apart from the DSS director? Uh, the FBI. The, the, the FBI director, <laughs> how many other security men, Secretary of Defense, has it changed any? So why is our own different? Okay. So uh, everything is wrong with our security system in this country. Now, now, now let's look at let's look at uh, what uh, Canon also talked about in terms of education. Um, none of Nigerian universities seems to be in the. Uh, I think first hundred. Mm -hmm. Not only first hundred, first six hundred. Okay. Le 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 before because we go into that, let me take this call from Lagos. Chibweze. Okay. Uh, we we lost that, we lost that call. Uh, yeah, yeah. You wanted to say something, sir. In terms of education. Yeah. Everything is wrong. Mm. Our universities have moved from half big. To how will I say that? <laughs> not done. <laughs> it's maybe not baked. <laughs> not baked. <laughs> because a lot of graduates that you see on the street, mm. give them assignment, and you will be surprised at what they can do. Mm. There is no doubt that a, a number of them are doing well, and if they go outside of this country, they are doing well. Mm. But a lot of graduates we produce in our university today. In the recent time, in the past three years, 
have been involved in university uh, system, you would discover that one point, most of them are on probation and they will manage them like that. And they will finish with third class. But third uh, class is always the highest number let me just in say, any convocation. <laughs> let me just say something I mean. to, to support your view. Okay. Because in a country where the constitution says that uh, for you to be a president, all that you require is a O level. Mm. And you even have a president that, don't have a, that doesn't have a secondary school certificate. The one he has was forged. Uh, uh, well, you can't substantiate that. We can. <laughs> For him yes. to, for him it, to, with for him we to saw hire, it was, with the it, recent was, it was forged. <laughs> with for him to passport. hire 14 senior advocates to defend secondary school certificate. <laughs> it's something is fishy. Okay, now, now, okay, Victor from Kaduna. Uh, are you there? The, the issue of the security in Nigeria. Okay. The area of the security chiefs. If you measure from chief of air staff, chief of army staff, IG of police, the immigration, almost all the chiefs of the staff are from the north. Mm. Why? It's only fire service and the chief of navy that are from the other zone. The remaining chief of the, the, the remaining chief of the security are from the north, which is very very wrong. And Nigeria should look into it because this is the first time this type of thing is happening in Nigeria. Mm. Out of almost to twelve chief of security, the remaining two, fire service and the Navy staff, Navy chief, if for understand, and the remaining is from the north, which is wrong. They should look into it. Now, 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 Mr. Victor, let me just ask you: Do you think Nigeria has any reason to celebrate? Hello, sir. Do you have? Do, do you think Nigeria has a reason to celebrate 58 years? I'm not hearing you. Oh, all right. You can hear us. I'm no. talking about this education. Yeah. I'm trying to look at the budget. Mm. You know, sir, that in this country, our budget performance is, is an eyesore. It's a serious problem. Mm. I don't think we used to perform up to 30% of our budget. Mm. And then, now we now manage, manage, manage. From January to August, budget of a country is not ready. Each time... You, you, you have budget on education. Do, do, do we even the funds, that? funds are not even released. That is why our university is known as ASU. ASU strike all the time because funds are not released. They cannot even pay them very well. And that is why private universities seem to be doing better than uh, federal universities and state universities do, now. Do, do you even think the, the next year budget can be ready? <laughs> That's the point. <laughs> because... So, the it, National Assembly has been on recess for uh, two months You know, months the, now. Co the currently the best university I in Nigeria is a uh, Convenant University, owned by by a certain individual. One six hundred and thirty-seven in the world. In, in the, the world. world, why UI University of Ibadan is six hundred and seventy-seven. So, if you talk about government-owned university. And their ranking, it means the best university, hmm. eh? government-owned university in Nigeria it's is a UI, uh, UI and that is ranked below, below Covenant University. Below Covenant when did we start Covenant University? Now, How did we get here? Now, 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 when you when you look ah! at when you look at all these things, you know, in 2011, hmm. our president, during the presidential debate, he wept openly. And Nigeria believed that this man has something to offer, and he was denied the opportunity to offer Nigeria that which was lacking. Mm. And 2015, Nigerians overwhelmingly voted for him. And lucky enough, we have a president, sitting president then, that is also uh, uh, God-guided. And he willingly relinquish power because if it were to be some African countries, Nigeria is supposed to be a war torn country by now. Mm. And he was given that goodwill and he came to power. What are we experiencing now? Do you say that, yes, the bloodshed, the killings, and all that that we are seeing is the gift, is what the president is offering Nigerians? Then let's look at even the economy. 
Nigeria just came out of recession. Are you sure Nigeria is, is out of recession? No? We are still in recession. Because a country, a country that cannot pay 18,000 naira, because the president say, is saying that uh, uh, governors cannot pay 18,000 naira. And these same governors, these same governors, they have, some of them have more than 2,000 aides. These same governors, their security vote is, it, it runs into billions. Yeah. And they cannot pay 18,000 naira. Mm. Eh? The, just some days ago, news featured in, in the social media, not only in the social media, that uh, the president's uh, wife's aid was arrested mm. for 2 point something billion, mm -hmm. 2.5 billion. And we are talking about 2.5 billion for a president who cannot afford 45 million naira uh, <laughs> presidential uh, ticket oh. form. Now, what, who are we deceiving? Mm. Who are we deceiving? Okay. Uh, uh, sir, sorry, yeah, sir. Yes, sir. Talking Before. about this minimum wage, I'm, I'm so sorry okay. to interrupt. All Talking right, about sir. this minimum wage, mm. I got some figures here. Okay. That for you to register WAIC, you need 13,000. Neko, you need 11,000. Mm. Uh, John. You need uh, maybe 6,000 thereabout. And that is about 30,000 thereabout. You need 30,000 to register all this just to get ordinary uh, school, first school living certificate. And then when you are employed, you need just 18,000 naira as, as your salary. You cannot even get it. <laughs> Well, maybe I mean, <laughs> does it make any sense? Well, uh, uh, let's let's take a break. Let, let's take a break. You you can be part of this program. Uh, it's live coming to you from ACNS today. Uh, I, I think I lost Doctor uh, Laleke from summer, uh, uh, from South Africa. We'll try and reconnect you back to just uh, uh, wrap up your thoughts on that. Uh, stay tuned while we just uh, uh, watch this clip uh, by the vice president and. Uh, Bishop Puka. But I worry about our collective cynicism about our country and I worry that when you speak in favor of Nigeria, um, Nigerians will think that either you're looking for a position or government must have offered you something. And it's a very worrying thing because um, we have all become obsessed, you know, with the whole idea that our country is not working and they are, we, are, we are the ones who are facing most of the problems of the world. The issues, therefore, for which we are contesting are profound. I come from northern Nigeria. And for me, what we are facing now, what the larger section of Nigeria is facing now, are some of the issues that somebody like myself has been contesting for more than 30 years. It was the subject of my PhD thesis on power politics in northern Nigeria. Because I live in northern Nigeria, and I live with, with, you know, with feudalism, not with democracy. And it is also, for me, very interesting. These are very exciting moments in Nigeria. With all the convulsion, they're very exciting moments. Because for the first time, every Nigerian is angry. The reasons may be different. You know, the reasons may be different, but this is one of the first times, this is one of those rare times in Nigeria that all of us are angry at the same time. And you know, Tolstoy, Tolstoy said, the Russian writer, he said, every unhappy family is unhappy differently. So the important thing is that all of us are unhappy. And I believe that the president is unhappy because this is not the Nigerian he sacrificed for. I am happy. I'm unhappy. The beggar the, who is lying under the bridge is unhappy. We're all unhappy. Now, how we progress and who sacrifices what, that is the issue. But I don't think anybody who understands the dynamics of democracy should for any moment suggest that freedom of speech can be circumscribed by any stretch of the imagination. But unfortunately, you know, we are, we are... We are in Nigeria, we live in Nigeria, where the only freedom that people concede to you is freedom to agree with them. And yet, you know, democracy, democracy is about, democracy is about managing, you know, these difficulties. And when you have a country like Nigeria, with such incredibly gifted and brilliant people, 
You know, it's a very difficult thing to teach a class of brilliant children. So anybody who wants to govern Nigeria must be prepared to cope with our anger, to cope, uh, to cope with our very constructed and efficient argument about how things ought to be and why where we are is not where we are supposed to be. Now, what people do with that is completely different. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, nation building in its classical sense really just refers to the formal and informal processes by which political leadership attempt to build a national identity, a national ethos, a national spirit, especially in ethnically and religiously diverse societies. But it is my own thesis that while government's role is in casting the vision and creating the environment for nationhood, the real building of nations is done and best seen through the accomplishments of many outside of political leadership. Men and women in business, in agriculture, in education, in entertainment, and the arts, who by just doing their business diligently, or serving faithfully, or making sacrifices, contribute to building the economies and social systems that ultimately build the nation. So there's no doubt at all from what Anita Isong says in her book, and also from, from experience, that grand corruption remains the most enduring threat to our economy. Just to give an example, three billion US dollars was stolen in what was called the so-called strategic alliance contract sometime in 2013. Three Nigerians were responsible. Today, three billion dollars is one trillion naira. Our budget, the entire budget, and budgets are estimates, not actual cash, is seven trillion. So if three people made away with one trillion, and the entire national budget is seven trillion, you cannot wonder how come it is that the economy will struggle. When oil in our country was selling for 100 to 114 dollars a barrel, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, nation building in its classical sense really just refers to the formal a tribe or religion are inextricably tied together. What affects one affects all. And how about the young men and women of the police and armed forces who lay their lives on the line daily to protect us? The story of late Colonel Muhammadu Abu Ali has been told often. As commander of the 272 Task Force Battalion, his battalion was responsible for the capture, for the recapture of Bama, Baga, Mongono, and later Konduga. He was decorated for bravery and excellence. He was decorated for bravery and excellence. He had become a terror to Boko Haram insurgents, but he and four others were killed in an ambush. He was just 36 years old, survived by a wife and three children. The story of the late Sergeant Chukudi Boko, Igboko went viral when he confronted armed robbers in a daylight robbery at the Zenith Bank in Oweri, Imo State. He killed one of the robbers. He killed one of the robbers. But the robbery was foiled, but he and another officer, Sergeant Sunday Agbo, died of the gunshot injuries that they sustained during the attack. Both of them left wives and children. It is to these men and women who fight to defend our nation from terrorism and crime that we owe the preservation of our nationhood. Some of them do not die, they just lose their limbs, they lose their sight, they lose their hearing. The widows and widowers and children of these brave men and women bear the pain and anguish of loss by themselves for many years. Thank you for staying tuned with us. Uh, this is uh, Nigeria at 58, assessing the performance of uh, our government since independence. Um, now, uh, I still have my guest in the house, uh, Reverend Canon Benjamin Agwejume and uh, Reverend Canon Smarts. 
Uh, I think I lost uh, Dr. Samuel Laleka from South Africa there. Yeah, but now let, 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 let's look at um, the previous government, especially let's look at uh, from 1999 up to now. I think we've had uh, four presidents, that's including the one there now. How will you rate their performances? I mean, looking at Obasanjo's eight years, uh, some people have said uh, he, he did well. Some have said uh, he's part of those who brought us here. Well, if I'm to rate all those who have ruled us since 1999, among them, the one I will rate with the highest uh, uh, percentage is Olusha Guabasanjo. Because during the time of Olusha Guabasanjo, the debt profile of Nigeria was very, very high as a result of military rule. Mm. And during his rule, the debts were paid. He opened up the telecom in, uh, industry. industry by creating jobs for Nigerians. And not only uh, the telecom industry, even uh, the medium uh, uh, skill uh, businesses yeah. were given that support. And you see, because if really you want to uh, affect the lives of uh, your citizens, those women who are selling Akara and others must be given the, uh, you must create uh, a good environment for their businesses to strive. But though it also has its own areas of uh, failures, but Obasanjo tried in area of creating job, in area of, uh, of uh, security, he tried, he tried his best. Only that he could not do much in the Niger Delta area, mm. which uh, Yeradua built on by declaring amnesty for the Niger Delta that brought peace to the Niger Delta area. Yeah. But when you as look... It, as a matter of fact, some people have even rated him as one of the presidents with good hearts. Uh, Yaradua. Yara, Yaradua. Yara, y yes, Yaradua tried his best, but I see Rito Basanjo above Yaradua. Why? Because number one, if you want to, if you want to maintain peace, they said uh, uh, an idle mind is the devil's workshop. Mm. You cannot talk of peace. You cannot talk of uh, fighting insecurity when people are jobless. <laughs> If a man has something doing, he can provide for his family. He will not think of uh, other neg negative means of making money. Because he, he will feel that, yes, I have a genuine means. I have a job doing to cater for my family. But in a situation whereby a man has a family of maybe six or seven, and has nothing doing, he cannot provide for his family, then he will take up yeah, arms yeah. or look for other uh, alternative to provide uh, for his family. And that is what is really causing insecurity in our country. Now, then if you look at other areas, yes, we may say that, yes, this president, uh, current president, is trying. But I don't really see any tangible effort. I don't really see any, because what I'm just seeing is pure nepotism. Mm. No job creation, insecurity, okay. we economy. Have, we have a caller, uh, Joseph from Bauchi. Can you hear me? Yeah. Joseph, speak on. Hello? Mr. Hello? Joseph, go ahead. Okay. I, have, I, I, I see no reason why Nigeria should celebrate uh, the U.S. decided to convert him. Due to what is going on in the country, the country is very, very wrong. Okay. I think you've made your point. Is saying there's no reason why Nigeria should celebrate. So, Nigeria is even more divided now. 
than before. Than before. Uh, um, no, 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 uh, Colonel Smith, I, I, I want us to look at the, the time between uh, OBJ, Yaradua, and Jonathan. Yeah. Someone said, uh, when OBJ, just like uh, that, they also said, when OBJ was there, I think Nigeria's debt profile was about $30 billion, and which was cleared. But as of now, we've doubled it. And um, mostly there's nothing to show for it. Exactly. So what has happened between the period when uh, Yaradua took over till now? Yeah, let me start by saying that uh, the leadership we have had over time in this country is nothing but accidental leadership. Mm. Our leaders are not always prepared. They find themselves there, including those who have contested for several uh, periods, mm. like the incumbent who, who has, uh, did it for, three, for, for third time and the fourth time he had the opportunity. It's still like they are not prepared for leadership. And that is why we have most of these problems that we have. Reason being that the moment they are there, it's as if there is a certain force in Aso Rock that is holding them down. From performing. From performing. <laughs> you understand? Mm. But the reason for most of these things is the fact that there is no political will to, to do what is right. Mm. What do I mean? Once you have become the president of a nation, irrespective of where you come from, you are now the president. And because you are now the president, what is expected is to be sure that everybody, every Nigerian, becomes your son. And you, you ensure that you take care of their welfare, and bring policies that will make things so work, work well. For them. Systems that can work, uh, create enabling environment and everything. But you see, from the current administration, his body language alone make a lot of investors to leave this country. Mm. Now let's let's go back to uh, the OBJ. He took over from the military, and there were a lot of problems that he inherited. But God used him and he was able to clear some of those debts, not without the help of technocrats that he brought on. They were the ones that helped him. But later at some point, you know, he started having problems with some of those mm -hmm. technocrats. Like Ngozi had to practically leave the place because the economic blueprint of the country that that was uh, written was not followed. So certain things started going bad. Mm. But all the same, we will say that during his time, a lot of achievement was, uh, we were able to achieve a lot. Uh, uh, teachers were able to start riding motorcycle during his time. During his time, that was when people started knowing that the work of a teacher is actually an honorable job. Mm. compared to when he's coming before. So a lot of things were opened up. During Yeradua, uh, the amnesty and so many other things were stabilized. Mm. Country were stabilized. But he lived um, for two years, barely two years. Yeah, and uh, time, Good yeah. Luck took over. And during Good Luck, Jonathan, uh, pro particularly in the electoral processes, a lot of good things was done. We started having free and fair election. It is during this time. Before, you can hear the governor, there are just few states Lagos, Zamfara, and Borno. These are the places you will hear that either AAPP, -A then, or AC, uh, yeah. uh, you know, they were the ones that can win it. But these other states, it has to be PDP. But during Jonathan, a lot of these things was no longer so. You know, people, people's votes counted, and then so many other parties. 
Okay, let, let's pick this call from Lagos. Chibweze, are you there? Uh, I'm talking about the security event. In Nigeria, there's nothing like security, and there's no need of security measure because when you look at the security, you understand that the security report that the chief security are from the northern side, and what they are doing is their own favor. If you come out to the in the, in the name of the university, you will find out that there are people at the mission more than the other tribe. But it's not fair. It's not fair. It's not what we see in the US today. We use now, we are the youth in the that they are calling the leaders the of tomorrow. But when you look at it, they are, the youth are suffering more than them. So it's not supposed to be like that. When we ask for when we see the difference, we show off our choice. So the, but there's nothing like that. Rather, they are describing. So, I look at uh, I look at it in another perspective. Um, uh, uh, let's look at has there been continuity in government? Because I think well, that's that's one of the major areas we need to look into going forward. Now. Are there continuity in government? Uh, one of the challenges we see now is when the government does something, another one abandons it and brings up its own. So it makes a lot of things not to go, go well. So do you think uh, there has been continuity between this successive uh, uh, democracy uh, looking at 1999 up to now? It, it will be 20 years next year. Wow. No. There's nothing like continuity in Nigeria. Mm. And that is why most of our plans are all in short terms, not in long terms, because we know that each government that comes in place knows that the next one will not continue with its policy. So whatever policy they are putting in place are short terms. If you look at uh, most of our governors, they don't invest in... Uh, uh, areas or businesses that will affect the masses. That will affect the masses. Mm. They will only put money in areas of uh, economic areas that can only last within the time limit when they will stay in office. And that is why Nigeria is not progressing. Take, for example, a Jakuta Steel Company. The Ajakuta Steel uh, Company has been there. That is a company that will provide millions of jobs and it will have chain effect on the economy. It was started, it's not during the Shagari's uh, period. 1979. And a lot of money. One more, the money that the Paris uh, uh, Club uh, refund that was uh, returned from. Uh, months ago that the vice president is going about distributing, if they put that money into a Jakuta steel company, it will do Nigeria more favor because it will provide job opportunity for Atimin youth. It will provide businesses for those women. They are distributing 5,000 5, because the election is here and they know that they have <laughs> failed and they have not performed. So mm. it's quick fees. Mm. Where will this one take us to? Basanjo came in, he did his quick fees. Yaradua came in. Unfortunately, he did not see the end of uh, his tenor. Jonathan came in, in, he was advised on quick fees. Now, the man who wept. And, and a lot of stealing under him. Yes, the <laughs> man who wept. <laughs> who wept during a presidential debate making Nigerians to feel that he has a lot to offer was given the platform and the opportunity and the goodwill what do we get in return instead of even if you cannot if you cannot provide and add value to what you have mm -hmm. it's also good you maintain the status quo of, of, of but today more than 10 million has lost their jobs mm. within three years. So instead of even creating jobs, people are losing their jobs. The bag of rice that they used to buy for 7,000 Naira is now 17,000 Naira. 
a liter of uh, fuel that uh, we used to buy for for 87 naira is now 155 naira. Uh, power that we used to pay very less is now is it has been uh, increased mm -hmm. astronomically. Mm -hmm. Now, with uh, my brother, and the power is not even there. Well, the power is not even there. Now, uh, and now. we are celebrating. <laughs> Let's just take and it. And we say we are in, now, today. If you see our government running to China for loans, mm. and China are ready to give Nigeria this loan in according to their own terms, and we say we are celebrating independence. When we cannot do anything for ourselves, we cannot without. do anything on our own without relying on them. Is that independence? Is that sovereignty? <laughs> well, let, uh, let, let's take it through as we round up uh, this <laughs> section before we move into another section. Yeah. Looking forward, what do you think Nigeria should be looking up to? Thank God there's another election year coming up. Uh, which kind of leadership should we be looking to? Well, before I get to which kind of leadership we should, we should be looking at, I think that Nigeria as a nation needs a blueprint or a plan, both short and long-term plan. For example, uh, United Arab Emirates, when they discover their oil, they knew already when the oil will finish. Mm. And they look inward. How are we going to sustain ourselves after oil? And they went into tourism. And they were able to build skyscrapers that attract people all over the world. Everybody with a small money will go to Dubai mm. for holiday and what have you. And that nation is being sustained. I think as a country, we should also look inward. We have to look at life after oil. What happens? Countries are already creating electric cars, solar cars, so that uh, we will no longer need fuel. Countries of the world may no longer need fuel in the long run, meaning that fuel prices will crash. What is our plan? Now, since we have the geographical location, gradually there is no place in this country that you can plant something that will not germinate. Even on your roof, if you leave it for some time, you put something, <laughs> it will spring up. This is how blessed we are in this nation. I think we should look at the agriculture and find a way of doing a long-term plan that will sustain, sustain this nation. Mm. That is one aspect. Then the second aspect is the area of leadership. We need someone that the moment he becomes the president, he must see every Nigerian as his own. Mm. Irrespective of the region you comes from. Oh, the tribe. Because, yes, and the tribe. Nigeria was aglam uh, amalgamated in 1914 for the ease of administration and what have you. So we were brought together. We will not say that it was Log Lugard mm. or the British government that did that. This is a divine arrangement. God so did it that we will come together. So when, whoever that becomes president, tribalism should not be an option. When you are tribalistic, when, when there is nepotism, then certain things will not be right. So we need a neutral man, a young man, who have ideas, who can take us to the promised land. Yes, we will look at that in the, in the last segment of this program, uh, looking at the young people and their preparation uh, towards uh, 2019. Uh, I, I, I will just uh, leave you with this video to tell you, uh, just like uh, the canon has... Uh, started it, uh, I, I will throw up a video by one of the former governor of the uh, uh, eastern part of this country to give us his own insight into uh, stuff. Uh, that's uh, Peter Obi. So while we wait uh, for that video, uh, we'll be coming back to talk about youth preparation okay. and to round it up for this year's Independence Day celebration. Thank you for staying.
as a philosopher, unexamined life is not worth living. So my first question is, how did we get here? Is to ask ourselves, how did we get? That we are divided is no longer an issue. Everybody knows that. But how did we get here? Looking for that, how we arrived here, becomes part of our building the solution to solving it. How are we going to get out of this mess we found ourselves? If you look at what is happening in Nigeria today, whether you call it, I say it every day, whether you call it uh, divided Nigeria, what are our problem? We have a nation that is divided. We are not talking about division now along ethnic lines only. We have religious lines. We have even elite class clashes because of disparity of income and everything. We shouldn't be. So you have a crisis. We have issue of security of all forms. Whether it's the security of life and property and any other forms of security. And to have an economy that is heading south. No matter what anybody tells you. Every head, our chief of DMO was saying yesterday that our debt is just 21.7 trillion, 70 billion dollars. And he said, it's not that when you compare it to our GDP, it's 17% when we should have about maybe about 30 or 40. The question is not how much you owe, but what did you use the one you borrowed to do? Borrowing money is not a problem. I lived it. all my life, I've always borrowed money. <laughs> but did you invest it? Or did you use it for consumption? When you're borrowing for consumption, you're heading for a disaster. When you're borrowing for wedding and for, to bury your parents that didn't save anything to be buried with, you're heading for a disaster. So it's not about how much we owe. Forgetting that in year 2007, all our debts were canceled. So why did we get here? What did we use it? Where are the bridges? Where are the roads? We are the, what we will use it to do? That is the challenge. That is the question. You're welcome back. Um, we are still on Independence Day of Nigeria, Nigeria at 58. And we've been on the studio with Reverend Cannon Smart and uh, Abwe Jume. Uh, this, um, thank you for staying here and for being with us uh, once again. So we want to look um, on the youths now. We want to um, talk about the youths now. And um, I, want to, I just want to throw this to you. The youths, leaders of today or tomorrow, is, is an open, open uh, discussion. I want to know, what's your take? Let me start from Canon Smart. Yeah, it has always been uh, youth are the leaders of tomorrow, but it is no longer so. Mm. Youth are the leaders of today. Um, the reason being that youths are, are within the age of the, the most productive age, so to say. Okay. They have the energy, they have the power, mm -hmm. they can innovate, and, and, and what a few. Okay? So, a lot of us today, we are already leaders in various organizations, in churches, and what a few, still within the age mm. of a youth. Mm. And a lot of us are doing well in those various positions. So I'm sure that if youth are also given opportunities in terms of governance, mm. they will also do well. But that is not to say that every youth is a leader of today. Okay. Okay. Youths who are ready, who are prepared, who, who have the while without, mm. can be said they are leaders of today. Because there are a lot of lousy youths and lazy youth, like Mr. President will say, here <laughs> and there. 
So it's not that every person who is a youth must be a leader. Those who are called and born leaders, they are already doing well. And I think that opportunities should be given to them to lead. Okay. Okay. Um, <clears throat> let me come to you, um, Canon Abedjume. I want to. I want you to weigh in on this. You know, owing to the fact that um, during speeches, the people in the government they usually say um, youths are the leaders of to tomorrow, or let me even say today. I want to. I want to ask: is, Are the youths given the rightful positions, even attentions, in our today's politics? Well, my answer will be in the affirmative. Okay. Whether if they are given the rightful positions, rightful positions and attentions, I will say, well, somehow they are not given the rightful position, and somehow they are given the rightful position. Okay, can you? Because when I say that. from. Uh, 1960 to 1970, between 70, okay, let's say between 84, we say, yes, the youths are given the okay. rightful position. You must understand what I'm saying. Exactly. But from that 1984 to date, when the when money bags and mm. uh, uh, courts took over the governance of this country, the position of the youth has been relegated to the background. Because if we say that uh, the youth are the leaders of tomorrow, there is nothing like such. Mm. The youth are the leaders of today. At what age do the youth take position of leadership, even in the family? Most people, most youth who are getting married, they get married at the age between 25, 40. Mm. Because if you are 40 and you are not yet married, they will tell you a fool at 40 <laughs> is a fool forever. <laughs> so if you are, yes, between the age of 25 and 40. That is where you see the activeness of the human person. They are very charismatic, they think very fast, and they are very energetic. And that is where, because that is when you direct the energy of the youth to a profitable area where they can be profitable, mm -hmm. both in the family and, and in the society. Because at the age of 50, uh, 60, you are close to the departure lounge. Mm. You are supposed to take the back seat and play an advisory role. Sorry. You should Sorry. be a consultant. Sorry. At 60, you are a consultant. At 60, even in our civil service uh, uh, when you that is when 60, you have already retired. Expected to retire, if you look at countries that are growing in terms of economy, in terms of politics, in terms of technology, technology. you see that their youth are actively involved. Yeah. And most of those who are playing, who are occupying one leadership role or the other in those countries are youths. Hmm. Look at just the hunger, the UN. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. United yeah, Nations General right. Assembly that took place in the uh, U.S. Mm -hmm. recently. Mm -hmm. Most of our elders who went there were sleeping. <laughs> but I don't think if you take a youth who is ready to give out, who is ready to learn, and who, because the social media today is dominated by youths. Mm -hmm. Even this current government was brought in by youth because it was the youth that did the dirty job in the social media. So youth are not uh, uh, leaders of tomorrow. They are leaders of today. And the reason why Nigeria is failing is because we see youth as leaders of tomorrow. And those who are 80 and above are leaders of today. And we continue to remain where we are until we bring the youth on board. 
Okay, um, <clears throat> I want us to look at the, the kind of youths we have in Nigeria today. Now, um, we have talented, skilled Nigerian youths. Sometimes we, we, we don't seem to um, know that. But when we look at the foreign scene, how the youths of Nigerians perform academically and otherwise, we'll be able to say or see that we really have talent in Nigeria. But most, most of the time, you notice that what we possess innately are being undermanaged or mismanaged or not really managed well. So youths, the, the, the vibrancy of youths are usually, usually channeled on the negative um, sides. You see the youths participating in um, lots of negative things, vices, and being used by these same leaders for, for the negative things. I want to know what's, what's your take on that, Kamal? My so. take on that would be that um, an ugly environment has not been created for our youths today mm. and that is why whenever they are abroad they are out of this country you see them excelling Excellent. because enabling environment has been created for them to to thrive now somebody i was listening to a guy who who is a first class graduate in electronic electronics okay and as a first class graduate he said look I have created a lot of apps. Whenever there is an accident now, there is an app I can create. The moment accident happens, it will send signal mm. to the road safety, and they will know the exact location through the GPS to be able to get there. But this young man is wallowing away, no support from anywhere. If you take him abroad, in a non-distant time, you will hear him pimp. Robotic engineer in the United States, is a Nigerian. So many of them like that are doing well. We don't even mm -hmm. have NEPA. You mm -hmm. wake up in the night, you cannot even have NEPA to power your laptop to, okay, for you to uh, be able to do anything. That, so, let, me, let me hold you for a uh, moment. We, we, have, we have a caller. What from, to put the leaders of today who are doing? Okay. The youth Chibu are not given the time to perform as a leader. They are not given the chance. Chibese, like the can, you, can you speak up a bit so we can hear you? If they will give us chance to lead in the country, I believe that will be more better in the country. So, and I know that if they give us a chance to use in Nigeria, this will change land for Nigeria. Okay, okay. Um, Chibeze is calling for chance for the youth. It's the same thing we are talking about. Yeah. The youths need, they need they need to be managed well. They need chance to, to express what, what they have and what they know. But I want to, I want to know, um, with the realities of today, are the youths well informed? Are we, are we ready for this political seat, for the leadership positions? Let me come to Kanon Abuja. Well, the youths are not well informed. Why am I saying this? Because uh, the political space has been dominated by money bags and uh, those who feel that uh, leadership is a do or die affair. Okay. And a kind of scenario has been created. Poverty situation has been created in the society. So the youth are easily, especially those that uh, are jobless are easily influenced by these money bags and uh, power hungry politicians and many of them they find it even difficult supporting their fellow youths many of them mm. they find it because they say he who plays the piper dictates the tune so they play eh, they play uh, 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 into the interest of those that we give them Money. little money that we sustain them for one or two days wow. and after those two days they will go into crime so if we say that yes uh, the youths the youths seriously the the current leadership of our country even uh, president who said he has signed the uh, 
uh, the youth uh, are, not too young to are not too young to run bill. What effort has he made for his own party to sell mm. the presidential uh, nomination uh, exactly. I was uh, going form to come to that, uh, since for forty-five million governorship for twenty-two point five. Uh, senatorial. Then you ask yourself, who is deceiving who? <laughs> Who is deceiving who? Mm. Living like what my brother said earlier, there is no youth in this country that has nothing to offer. Even those ones that we call they are lazy youths. No Nigerian, because if it's easy, try and cross the Sahara Desert through the Mediterranean Sea <laughs> to Europe. You will know that no Nigerian youth is lazy. Wow. For a youth to take that risk, Hmm. Because he knows fully well that when he gets to Europe, he must he has, a better chance. he has a better chance of getting something to do to sustain himself and his family. So they put their life at risk, at risk. because our government has failed them. Look at China. You don't depend on paper certificate hmm. before you will be an engineer. You don't depend on paper certificate. Offer. Before you be a civil engineer, it is what you can offer. Many of them are very, very good in craft. So you see the government encouraging them. And when you know how to do the, you have professionalized in that uh, uh, craft, they issue you a certificate. The same, most of our engineers that are professors, many of them cannot even fix their their. Car, a car tire. <laughs> and it's a, a, it's a PhD holder yeah. in mechanical engineer, yeah. engineering. Then when you look at, it makes mockery of what we are talking about. There is, no, there is nothing like lazy Nigeria. I don't believe in what the president said at all, that uh, what we have are lazy Nigeria. No Nigerian youth is lazy when you go to all these areas go to all this mechanic and where all this uh, go to apple go and see how youths are hustling mm. to survive how has the government encouraged the youth if if i can add something to that mm. youth and politics there has been deliberate policy and attempt over the years mm. to shut the youth out of politics what the youth in Nigeria are good at, according to our leaders of today, mm -hmm. is for them to be political thugs, to be giving them peanut, two thousand, three thousand. They have shut them out because we are running a politics of money. Of money. Mm -hmm. The politics has been so monetized. That when, as a youth, you are vying for a position, you need a godfather who will support, sponsor you. So that when you get there, you dance to his tune. The moment you don't accept what your political godfather tells you, mm -hmm. then your, 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 your future is on. Mm -hmm. Like what is playing uh, in uh, Lagos. Uh, Ambody and uh, Tinubu. <laughs> <laughs> is it true? So, so the, 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 the point is that this, this too young to run bill is just a deception. Mm -hmm. It's a deception. Why should I say it's a deception? You do not reduce money. Mm. You do not do anything. You only reduce age. Are they going to use their cloth no or their intestine the, the bill, to the, pay for the form? Even yes. the bill is supposed to, is supposed to be not, it's a too old to run bill, not too young. Not, <laughs> too old to run. No, once you, no, once you are 60, once you are you 60, don't run again. you don't run again. You're supposed to play an advisory role. role. You're supposed wow. to play an advisory consultant. So I want us to, to come, come down a little bit because we are talking about um, leadership in the whole. Some, some people were, are of the opinion that they are born leaders, while some are made leaders. So I want to know, in the family scene, what, what can the parents do while raising their children to imbibe that good leadership qualities in their children good morals so that they, they don't even before they they are exposed to the society they don't grow up being um political thugs or um 
engaging themselves in the negative uh, things. Yeah, what yeah. role can the parents play in this? Well, every human being is a born leader. Okay. I say every human being, not some. Okay. It depends on the kind of environment you are born into that influences you. Because if you are born into a kind of environment that is volatile, even if you have those leadership qualities in you, it will take divine grace for you to begin to show them. Okay. Because when the environment you are born into or you, are, you grow in is not a kind of environment that is friendly, you grow up to be what the environment makes you to, makes makes you to you be. To be. Okay. Like what my brother said in the case of uh, uh, Godfatherism, the yeah. situation in our environment, in our society today, even if you are a born leader as a youth, you cannot really, really express or show your potential because the room is not there. A barrier, a barricade has been placed on the youth who, are put, who have those potentials because of the kind of environment. Because today, I don't think that uh, some of our youth who are married today, most because once you are 25, 30, 40, 50, they are married. They are youths. We are not the ones telling them how to rule their homes. Their homes. They are leaders in their right, wow. in their various families. But when it comes to the society, we say they are not good enough to be leaders. If a man can manage his home, if a man can manage his family, why can't that man manage a particular responsibility in the society? Yeah. So seriously, seriously, every human being, every youth is a born leader. Yeah. It depends on the kind of environment okay. and society that influences. That, that is why you will see a youth that is not doing well in Nigeria, if he travels out of the church of Nigeria, we will right have a right first class. You will see that youth becoming uh, something, a, a something better, better than, than when, he left. when he left Nigeria. Why? Because it's the kind of environment, environment, the atmosphere created for you to strive. But when the atmosphere is not good for you to strive, even if you have the potential, if you have the qualities, you will die with them in Nigeria here. Yeah. So we need an enabling environment. environment. Oh. If I can also uh, say that as parent, we also need to lead by example in our various homes. Mm -hmm. When you grow up in a home that is having irresponsible parents, there is every probability to have irresponsible children unless God intervene, unless they made the Lord at some point mm. and certain wrongs has been corrected. So parent must lead by example because we learn by what we see. Whatever I'm doing now, my son monitors me. He, he know what I'm doing and then sometimes when I'm not watching him mm -hmm. he wants to do what daddy is doing. You are like an icon. To exactly. Every father or parents are the heroes of their children. They look up to you. So how you live your life is very very important to your children. Mm -hmm. Then if we can also bring in the aspect of teach your children morals. Teach them the word of God. Teach them morals. Because there is a lot of immorality and irresponsibility in our society today. So parents who teach their children morals and teach them the word of God, they are, they are only preparing them of becoming a better leader. Okay, um, with, judging from all we've said and with the quality of youths we have in the present day in Nigeria, are, the, are, are we competent enough, are the youths competent enough to unseat the elderly ones who 
have refused to leave the the these the uh, positions, these leadership positions. Are they competent? I would say yes, they are. We have we have hundred Emmanuel Macron in Nigeria. Nigeria. Who can do what Macron is doing and can even do it better? Now, what to do to unseat the old, too old to run, is for the youth to vie for position of National Assembly, House of Representatives, Senate, and, uh, State House of Assembly. When youth occupy all those positions, the first thing they get there to do is to amend the Constitution. I mean it in such a way that it can compete with, with other nations of the world. Because I see constitution as part of our problems in this country. Mm. If youths get all these positions and they're able to amend the constitution in such a way that you don't need millions of naira to buy a political form, a political nomination interest form or nomination yes. form, then from there they can take up. Okay. Why not put a restriction in the form and say you from five million downward and the, the money you will need to use for your campaign as a president you should not spend more than a hundred million era we should not do money politics in this country so until certain restrictions has been placed then it's going to be very very difficult for the youth to unseat now all those ones that are contesting for position of president I'm telling you, by the time results come out, it will be ridiculous because they are not, pre they are not, they are, youths are not ready. Wow. Okay. Um, um, I want to, I want to know, can the youths that we have right now, can they work hand in hand with these elderly ones without fear of um, intimidation, fear of favor, you know, or interferences? Let me come to you. Can they you? cannot work with the old ones without interferences. Okay. <laughs> because there must be, there must be like what I said earlier, that he who plays the piper dictates the tune. The youths are not uh, financially buoyant. buoyant as the elderly ones. So the elderly ones, they have the stick, they have the carrot, or the knife and the, and the yam. yam. Mm. So if they cut for you, they tell you how to cook it. <laughs> or if you are to roast it, they will tell you how to roast, roast it. it. If you fail to do what they ask you to do, like what uh, we made reference mm. to in the case of Ambody and uh, Tinubu, the man to Lagosians, the governor is performing. The man is bulldozing and working and developing Lagos. Mm. But... The person who put in there said See, the man has not, not performed to master plan. because Which master plan? he refused. <laughs> that is it. Uh, and now he want to unseat him at uh, all costs. And bring another one. That and bring can, another one that will be loyal to that him. That he can remove control. So I can say two cannot work together except they are what? They are one. Yeah. So, so there is no way, when you say two youth now, uh -huh, I will say yes, but for an elderly man that is close to his grave, mm. to work with a youth who is vibrant, who is ready to express his potential, his vision, that, mm. is, that, not, that is not in tandem with that of the older man that, is still, belie that still believes in analog. analog. Okay. There is no way uh, analog and uh, digital can uh, <laughs> uh, work together. Work together. Okay. It's either you give way, the analog must give way for the digital. Because we are in a digital era. So that, is, that was why I said, once you are above 60, you're supposed to take the back bench mm -hmm. and yeah, play an advisory role to the youth to perform. Okay. But when you say, no, I will still be at the driving seat i must die there i mm. must die there sit tight look syndrome. at what our president said when he traveled to to un that uh, uh, he need the support of uh, both international and uh, 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 nigeria in, in diaspora That's to okay. support him that uh, if they support him and he wins the next election and god he knows that yes that if he's alive 
for the next four years, <laughs> he will do better. What are we talking? If he is alive. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, what we, are we talking? We've been able to um, Why not give the youth who can do it? We've been able to deduce that the policies, the, the constitution, they don't favor the youths. That even the not too young to run bill that was signed by the president is just like um, um, giving the youths hope when exactly. they are, we don't actually meet mm -hmm. so what we want to i want to know is there anything uh, with the way youths are emasculated with the way they are they are being pushed aside is there anything these uh, elderly ones are hiding in these pos political positions is there anything they are they are keeping away from the youths that's that uh, that is making them keep push the youths as away from these particular positions we want from because nigeria is being kept at uh kept stationary kept at yeah, a, at a position. Are, we are uh, we are standing we are not moving yes. instead it seems as if we are drawing back yes. so is there anything is there anything there, my there? brother there is there is something there if if now you uncle <laughs> when you are there <laughs> when you are there budget budget has been done already for your wardrobe allowances, mm. for your vehicles, furniture allowances, haircut, newspaper, which one again? Mm. Kitchen utensils. Wow. Everything has been captured in the budget. Can your own is to sit down and enjoy. Even your coffee allowances, <laughs> your coffee, the day you will die, the ones that, that the death you have not even uh, died now, the one you will die in the next <laughs> ten years. They have started budgeting for the allowance. The very they understand? have started budgeting for it. So with all these things, you go there and you want to run in a hurry. They are no hurry. <laughs> they, they are like not in a hurry. Here. They are no in a hurry to live there. And besides, my brother, the moment you become a governor, my brother, your life don't better. Why do I say so? The moment you are a governor, do you know the package? They give a governor when you retire. <laughs> the package for the president. Wow. Their retirement benefit. Wow. My brother. They change your cars. You are entitled to house in Abuja and in your state capital. They give you money. I learned that a particular governor that is making noise now, who is now a former governor, collect almost 200 million naira in a month as is a package. Wow. Okay. Ah, um, um Canons, I, I want us to um, speak to the youths directly now. There are youths out there that are watching us presently. They are hopeful. They don't have um, anyone to manage them. They don't have anyone to lend them that helping hand. They don't have the means to leave the country for a better environment. What's your advice to these youths? Well, my advice to the youths, is that don't pull your fellow youth down because of an elderly man who believes that he can buy you over with a little mm -hmm. amount of money mm -hmm. because if that elderly man buys you over with a little amount of money to pull your fellow youth down who is supposed to be there to build the future of your children you have put your destiny down. The only thing that the youths can do to better the lives of Nigerians is not to be political talks. Because none of those politicians that are above 50, 60, 70, 80 are using their children for toggery. Many of them, their children, those uh, politicians, their children in Harvard University. Some of them are in Birmingham University. Mm. Some of them are in uh, Oxford University. None They're of them. Really and nice when way. they finish, they will finish their master's, finish their PhD, and come and take over from their father. Okay. Why you will remain <laughs> and die in that abject poverty. Wow. So it will be better. Okay. It will be better. Not we clamoring for not too young to run bill. Me, I did not support that bill any day. If the bill they signed was 
too old to run bill. That was what the youth they put. I could, I would have been happy. Okay, let me hold you there, Canon. Please, I want to put you on the spot, Canon Smart. Yeah, if right. if if a youth emerge in a, 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 um in one of the or the political parties, the major political parties, yeah. and the youth emerge as the sole candidate, will you vote for the youth and why? Yeah, as it is now, I will vote for a youth because the older ones we're given no opportunity. What did we get from the mm. opportunity we have given them? So, list all of them we've been trying them. My brother, all the president in this country, we've been trying them because we want a better life, and they have not succeeded either. Let's try a youth to see if he can change certain things. Mm. So I'll vote for a youth. I already have a candidate I'll vote for come 2019. Wow. Yes. So uh, for me, my personal advice would be that youth, don't sell your future to mm. any politician. Mm. Don't. For the sake of 5,000, even, even if it is one millionaire, it does not amount to anything. Mm. Don't. Stand for the truth and do what is right. I want youth of today to be Joseph of this generation. Joseph had no backing from anybody, or he rose up to become a prime minister at age 30. No backing. Why? He was faithful. He was focused. He knew where he was going because he had a dream. Joseph had a dream of becoming a leader, and he became. You would have a dream, have a future. No matter how big the dream is, have it. And walk towards it and be focused. Wow. I'm sure that you can become a president, a senator, whatever you desire. Wow, 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 wow. Um, youths, you've heard it. Dream big. Just I'm dream big. You. Don't don't be don't be economical with your dreams. Just dream big and walk towards it. Walk towards it. Um, we've been able to deduce that. The, the policies do not favor the youths. The constitution do not favor the youths. The elders, they don't have the interest of the youths at heart. Okay, okay, before we, before we conclude, we have a caller. So let's just attend to the caller. Manasseh, from... And Benue. I want to contribute Are you there? to advise the youths. You know, those youths that do give the access to be used by these two old to run politicians, because we show themselves useful because what God invested in them, they don't have to give it out so that these two oaths to run will take them as ungranted. <laughs> By giving them 5,000, 3,000 to go and rig election or do whatever they want. So let the youth show themselves as important you know, people in Nigeria so that those people will know that Without them, they can do nothing. Thank you. Thank you very much, Manasseh. Thank you. He's advising the youths not to sell their future. All right. Um, it's Independence Day. I feel we should pray for um, Nigeria's liberation before we we'll call this segment off. So, Kanona Bejume, please, just say a word of prayer for Nigeria. Well, Father, we thank you for another Independence Day even though we have leaders that are still enslaving the masses and that are still placing huge burden and suffering on the masses. God, deliver us Amen. from bad leaders. Amen. Deliver us from evil leaders. Amen. Deliver us from blood-sucking leaders. Amen. And make, a, make Nigeria a peaceful nation, a prospering nation, Amen. a nation that will glorify you, Amen. a nation that is built on the foundation of truth, peace, and justice, Amen. a nation that is built on the word of God, that your purpose for Nigeria will be attained. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. On that note, we want to bring this segment to a close. Uh, remember, it's been Nigeria at 58 Independence Day um, program. 
So with that, we want to wish Nigerians and all well-wishers of Nigerians happy Independence Day. Stay blessed. and opinions expressed on this program are those of the guest and viewers and do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of the Anglican Cable Network Nigeria ACNN.